Good morning. It's Friday, November 10th, 2023. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Evil Growing Stronger. And our scripture is Revelation chapter 9, where the Apostle John talks about his vision. Then the sixth angel blew his trumpet, and I heard a voice speaking from the four horns of the gold altar that stands in the presence of God. And the voice said to the sixth angel who held the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great Euphrates River. Then the four angels who had been prepared for this hour and day and month and year were turned loose to kill one-third of all the people on earth. I heard the size of their army, which was two hundred million mounted troops. And in my vision I saw the horses and the riders sitting on them. The riders wore armor that was fiery red and dark blue and yellow. The horses had heads like lions, and fire and smoke and burning sulfur billowed from their mouths. One-third of all the people on earth were killed by these three plagues, by the fire and smoke and burning sulfur that came from the mouths of the horses. Their power was in their mouths and in their tails, for their tails had heads like snakes with the power to injure people. But the people who did not die in these plagues still refused to repent of their evil deeds and turn to God. They continued to worship demons and idols made of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood. Idols that can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders or their witchcraft or their sexual immorality or their thefts. According to Genesis chapter 12, the Euphrates is a natural border of Israel. The reason God's judgment is focused on this area is because it's the place of beginnings for evil in the world. These evils included the first sin, the first murder, and the first recorded idolatry when Nimrod built the infamous Tower of Babel. God may take his time in bringing judgment, but he always brings it about properly and at the right time. All the different kinds of evil in this world are staggering to the average person. We wonder how in the world God can sort it all out, especially if we've felt its sting. I have. When I was serving as pastor in Gainesville, Florida, there was an assault on our church buildings one night. Fortunately, no one was there, but the gang left the place, including my study, in shambles. There were satanic symbols painted on the walls and broken stuff everywhere. The chief of detectives of the Gainesville Police Department was a member of our church, and he assured me that it was the same as some other Satan-worshipping rituals that he had seen. How deep does evil run? An Associated Press release in 1990 reported that in Medellin, Colombia, the home base for the billionaire drug barons of Colombia, their most vicious weapons are sicarios, hired assassins who, with shotguns, pistols, and ice picks, have killed presidential candidates, judges, a newspaper publisher, an attorney general, assorted army personnel, and at least 40 police officials. These sicarios are recruited children as young as six and trained to be professional killers by the age of 14. It takes demonic inspiration to bring children to this depth of evil. Now we are not yet in that time, the Great Tribulation, yet we see the seed being planted and growing each year. If you're a normal human being, you ask, why all this evil? The answer falls under the general heading of the judgment of God. But the reason or purpose of Satan's brutality will be to amass an army large and mean enough to kill one-third of the world's population, and his ultimate end will be to gain control to rule the entire earth. His front man for this is called the beast elsewhere in scripture. The world is being conditioned at this very point to accept the ways Satan's henchman operates. Evil is growing stronger in this world. Human minds, under the inspiration and direct manipulation by the enemy, are up for grabs. Technology, combined with economy, is influencing the minds of tomorrow's world leaders today. Consider MTV a microcosmic example, as reported in 1993. 
quote, a recent self-promotional ad in an advertising trade publication brags, quote, any channel can deliver eyeballs, but how many can include hearts and minds? In another ad, MTV calls itself, quote, not a TV channel, but a cultural force. Still another, and perhaps even more revealing ad, shows a young man relaxed in an armchair with his remote control. The ad copy tells us this man is the quote-unquote opinion leader among his friends. The headline declares, quote, Buy this 24-year-old and get all his friends absolutely free. It's impossible to gauge the amount of influence cultural giants like Twitter and Instagram and all the other social media giants will wield in the Great Tribulation. But just the same, I'm glad God is still in control and he will allow Jesus to pluck the church out of this world before that all starts. It's commonly called by the name Rapture. War is seldom the war to end all wars. But this war to end all wars is getting close. Under the holocaust of the fourth seal in Revelation chapter 6, one-fourth of the world's population dies. Under the sixth angel's trumpet, one-third of those survivors now die. You would think even the worst God-haters would get religion after that, but that doesn't account for the stubbornness of those delusional enough to think they're greater than God. The people left on earth, rather than repent and give glory to the true living God, simply become more hardened than ever, and they turn even more so to their material gods and devil worship. It's indeed an amazing thing that people would worship or entrust their future to nutty things like Ouija boards and witchcraft and other goofiness rather than a God who came right to us and died for us and rose again so we could too. Yet that's exactly what they do and they get angry at anyone who tells them the truth. It's reported that in Germany there are more registered fortune tellers than pastors. Satan worshippers all over the world pray to the devil for him to break up the marriages of pastors. And that's just a faint shadow of delusion's ultimate stubbornness which will show up when the beast is in charge. Dr. John Phillips, in his commentary on Revelation, gives a great statement of just how unglued the whole idea of righteousness will become in the Great Tribulation. Quote, What a picture of a crime-oriented culture. Man has finally arrived at his goal. A government and culture in which permissiveness is the accepted norm and where all kinds of deviation and misbehavior are applauded and encouraged. A government presided over by a fascinating but foul individual called the man of sin. Up to this juncture, the seals and trumpets have been judgments of God's allowance. The extreme judgment in this passage indicates the progressive nature of sin and its consequences. This time, the judgment is not by allowance, it's by God's activity. It's the wrath of God that falls. And in the day of God's wrath, who can stand? The psalmist says that plainer than anyone. God is an honest judge. He is angry with the wicked every day. Apostle Paul wrote that clearly also. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins, for the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. And Apostle John also covered that in his gospel writing. Anyone who believes in God's Son has eternal life. Anyone who doesn't obey the Son will never experience eternal life, but remains under God's angry judgment. For you today, these judgments could tend to depress you if they didn't scare you to death and make your heart pound. I'm glad that God waited at least until 1956 to begin the tribulation and his judgments. The reason is, that was the year I gave my heart to Jesus Christ. He saved my soul and he sealed my life and eternity against the day of judgment that the world is going to go through. And if Jesus forgave enough sin to save me, he'll save anyone who asks him. One final word in this devotion that's been turned into the length of a sermon And if you're still with me, please listen for just another moment. If you've never trusted Christ by asking Him to forgive your sins, 
But now you see that that's exactly what your heart wants more than anything. Simply bow your head and tell him that. It's that simple. He's just waiting to hear from you. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.